Loctite here under the screw to lock it in place in the hotbed. I used a uh, drill bit as you can see here and I just tapped the, uh, the top of the hole to make it a bit and using the cliff again technique so that I can easily put the two tie wraps. This is like using a third hand. We need to adjust this so that the belt is right in the center of the rail. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Daniel here. I have with me the brand new Amers or Tevo Tarantula Pro. And this video is long, it's about the installation, but I give all the details that you need to know. And I also disagree with some of the procedures that the Amers show in their own video. It's missing a few steps also, and the current PDF file from the manufacturer is for the previous version, not for this one. And this one is a bit different, especially for the power supply and the control board. It's a great looking printer. I just, I love it. Um, so my recommendation to you is take the time to look at the video first. Like I'm adding stuff like Loctite in a few critical places, in my opinion. So watch the whole video once and then watch it a second time, step by step, when you install your printer. And the procedure is the same for the RS model. This is the Pro model. Just a quick note before you watch the video. You will see at the beginning I made a mistake and that simply I was focused on the camera and the angle. But when you install the Y-axis rail onto the frame, just be careful that you have the big holes at the bottom. And uh, I kind of missed that at the beginning, but I did correct myself later on in the video. So I thought I would mention that in case some of you notice the, uh, the screws here um, at the top of the frame. The first thing we will do is build the frame. So for this, we will need screws from the bag A01 and these three pieces over here. Make sure that you have, as you can see here, the big hole facing down and the big holes over here facing outside, just like that. And we will use the big long screws and we will put a lock washer. Some people call it a spring washer, but they're lock washers, just like so. And we will tie two here and two there, but not all the way in. We will check first the square and the distance before we tighten everything. After checking that everything is square with the right angle, and our ruler here for the distance. And here to check that this is totally flush in here, I tighten the four screws here on the side. Now it's time to install the feet. On the long segment, the feet go on the outside. On the short segment, they go on the inside. And all you have to do is insert those one of those silver screws inside the feet like this. You can push it all the way down with your tool and at this end you just screw a T-nut just like this and you do this four times so this is exactly what you want here just look at the orientation of the T-nut do that four times and then you just slide it over here and then you tighten the T-nuts so let's do that now our four feet are now installed just a word of caution this is rubber so do not over tighten because you're going to deform the feet here so now we can turn this right side up like so and go on to the next step we will now install the y-axis guardrail with the four shorter screws and a lock nut over here like so with the uh, bigger holes of course facing upwards to hide the screws but before we tighten everything we have to double check the distance over here and over here to make sure we are totally square so double checking before we tighten everything here we have here exactly 10 centimeters and we have here exactly 10 centimeters so and we should be square here because we did check our frame before 10 and exactly 10 so we are good to go here so far for the next step we just put the frame on the side and we use the front plate the display and bag number a 
zero two. So we have small uh, black screws that we will use to uh, tighten the display onto the plate. So we need to remove the knob and insert the display here at the back. So this is easier because we don't need risers like in the previous version. The uh, plastic mold here has risers as you can see right here. And we will use the uh, silver screws for the two sides with here with the uh, the T-nuts. Now we have the front plate fully assembled just leaving the screws on the side here like loose for now on the two sides. For the next step we will need uh, bag number A03, A motor and this bracket over here. So we will install uh, two, uh, two things here. So let's start first of all with this little uh, bracket uh, here. So we take the long screw, we go under like this, we use a spacer, we use a bearing with the wide or the long part at the bottom, reverse for the other bearing like so, and the lock nut at the end over here. So we will have this arrangement here that you can see right there. So now we need to tighten the lock nut and with the shorter screws we go under and we put a T-nut right here. So we do that twice and this is the part that uh, we have at this point. I just need to tighten the lock, uh, the lock nut over here. Make sure that you tighten this part enough here so that it is not wobbly but that you can still turn these two bearings over here. Now for the next step make sure that the connector on the motor here is facing you and then you will install the bracket this way. So like this. So with the little black screws, we are going to tighten all four over here. But you can see here that the, the holes are slotted. So you can move this sideways. So do not tighten too much for now because we may need to adjust that uh, later on. After we have the plate on the motor, we just need to feed the uh, silver screws from under like this and put a uh, T-nut. So we do that for all all three and then we will put the gear on the shaft of the motor but we don't need really to tighten it for now they recommend here to measure the distance but uh, we don't really need to you will see it's late it's better later on if you align it with the uh, the belt so i'll just put two more over here and this part will be done so this is it for this part and again I want to stress that I did not tighten the four black screws over here because we can move the motor sideways and my guess is that we will need to do that for a final adjustment. So let's uh, keep them a bit loose uh, for now. For the next step you will need the hot bed uh, support. Put the tabs on your right and you will need the bag of screws B02. Now here we have two types of wheels. So on the on the left, you are going to use a long screw, put in a wheel, an aluminum spacer, and then you would just put that in here and put a lock nut at the back, which I'm going to uh, tighten off uh, camera. So just like that. So this wheel here will be the same. Now this wheel here is different. You will use a screw, a wheel, and then you will put a brass spacer, and then you will put an eccentric knot. Eccentric because if you look at the shape here, they're, they're not symmetrical so this will allow you to adjust the space between the wheel and the frame so this has to go this way like this and then you just put it in here the eccentric nut will fit in the hole and then you put a lock a lock uh, nut at the bottom like that so i'm going to tighten this you can tighten these two here very hard because they are fixed wheels 
Do not tighten these ones because you will need to adjust the spacing with the eccentric nut. The four wheels are now tightened. Make sure that uh, these two here especially turn freely because these are fixed tight. And these ones also here should be, like I said, loose so that we can adjust the eccentric nuts here when we put this on the frame. Now I adjusted the two eccentric nuts here and there is no wobble as you can see and if you tilt it slightly it will slide just like that see it's free to move it's not too tight so this way it is perfect now we're going to install the bearing or the idler that we put together in the previous step here on the y-axis rail by just sliding it here the t-nuts inside the rail like so and do not install this flush with the rail here because we're going to use that idler to tighten the belt uh, uh, later on so leave about five millimeters of space here between the bracket and the end of the rail for the next step you will need the back number b031 and this are the three limit switches for the axis. So here we have small screws and big screws, actually two big ones and uh, T-nuts. So all we have to do here is uh, install the limit switch in this direction here to leave this slot available for the screw that will lock this on the rail. And now we use the small screws to tighten the switches. We'll do this uh, twice here. We have our two limit switches uh, put together now, as you can see, with the two little screws and a uh, T-nut in the back. And now taking our frame uh, back, we can install the limit switch for the Y axis, just like that. And this we can put flush with the end. And we're going to tighten the screw, just like that. So now our limit switch is installed. For the next step, we will just turn our frame upside down, take the previous assembly of our Y-axis motor and slide the motor over here and turn in here the uh, T-nuts until they align and we can install the motor in line with the end of the rail because we have here this bearing to adjust the uh, tension so now we can tighten this thing here now the three screws are tight and note that the connector here is facing inwards now the next step is to install the uh, belt of the y-axis starting here going around the motor coming back this way around the idler and over here so this is one of the most difficult steps in the process here because you need to feed this over here you need to put tie wraps and uh, what you need to do and I'll show a picture you need to close the loop like this teeth into teeth right so that it doesn't move back so I'm going to feed this over here into the slot here now to install the belt, I find it easier to put the tie wraps if I lock the belt with a clip, as you can see here. So I put the clip to hold the belt together, and now it's going to be easier just to put the two uh, tie wraps. We can see the tie wraps now are in place with the clip I was mentioning, and the teeth are in teeth, so this is not going to move. Now I'm going to cut the tie wraps, and before I cut the excess uh, belt. I'll just make sure I have enough. I'm sure I do, but make sure I have enough here to go all around and connect to the slot here. So I run the belt from here around the motor all the way to the idler and then into the slot and secured with a clip that will make it easier again to put the tie wraps. I don't have a lot of attention, but this is why we left here five millimeters so I can move the bracket and that will give me enough attention. I installed the two uh, tie wraps here, I still need to cut them, and I tightened the idler here. I still have one millimeter of play if one day I need to pull a little bit more, 
and uh, the belt here we have a good uh, tension as you can see now I cut the excess belt at both ends and we have our y-axis moving perfectly in no wobbling so yeah so far so good for the next step we need our frame upside down in our power supply and bag number A04 which has a few uh, black uh, screws and uh, two uh, T-nuts so we need to drive here the power supply and the control board in the channels here now this unit is uh, solidly in place we can turn this right side up like so and proceed with the installation of the front plate which will basically slide in the channels over here so I'm going to do that and uh, tighten the screws so we have our front plate in place and our power supply and control board over here we are left with uh, two screws and two uh, T-nuts in this process I think this is because of the previous model that was a little bit uh, different for the attachments now before we proceed if you remember we did not adjust the height of the pulley here and I said we would do that later on which is now we need to adjust it so that the belt as we can see is perfectly parallel to the channel or the rail behind it so and then we can tighten that pulley and it is at the right spot the next step is to install the hot bed on the bracket and we do that using the screws in bag B021 and as you can see we have the four wheels the four screws and the four springs now the problem here with the installation uh, that is recommended is that the screw here gets a little bit lower than the surface of the hot bed so when you glue in the printing surface I'm not sure that the glue here is going to lock the screw in place so that the problem I may encounter is that when I rotate this wheel at the bottom to change the level of the hot bed I'm afraid that the screw here is going to rotate with the wheel that would not be good so I'm going to use Loctite for this and I'm going to use red Loctite not blue I want to make sure the screw does not rotate so I'll put a drop of Loctite here under the screw to lock it in place in the hotbed so this way I think that things will not move when we adjust the level the springs and the wheels are installed a little bit of uh, red uh, lock tight over here so I'm going to leave this uh, to dry for a day before I put the printing bed uh, on top for the next step we will need these uh, two uh, brackets and bag number B03 which has a lot of screws we're going to use less than half so we'll use this uh, orange bracket first and uh, what we will do is insert a big screw at the bottom here insert a eccentric nut facing down like this insert a spacer put the wheel a spacer again an eccentric nut the other direction and then we'll put two big screws over here and put it down like that so that we don't dismantle this one here so two aluminum spacers aluminum spacers one wheel here one wheel here aluminum spacers aluminum spacers and leaving it like that so we don't lose our screws we take our bracket and we put the bracket over here and we have three lock nuts to put over here this is how our bracket uh, looks like so we can fasten the two wheels over here these two because they're not movable they're fixed but this one here is on eccentric nuts so this one here we won't tighten too much for now 
before installing this uh, bracket on the uh, x-axis uh, rail I think it makes sense to install the wheels first because it will be difficult afterwards to, uh, to align both rails at the same time so there is here and I'm going to try to show that to you here on this the eccentric nuts they have a notch this is how you know that they are oriented exactly the same way otherwise this wheel will be at an angle and you don't want that so let's try to see uh, with the current setting it's, oh look at that look at that it goes perfectly and if you put it at an angle like that look it goes down slowly no wobbling this is perfect so I'll leave it like that and I'm going to tighten the three bolts at the back for the next uh, step we need the rail the uh, x-axis rail we need screws uh, B1 I put most of the screws from the previous step away except these two uh, these two nuts over here and that's not clear in the instructions but uh, I just proceeded by elimination. I think you need these two here to lock at the back. I won't be able to show that to you here. At the back of this bracket right there, we need to put a knot to be able to connect this rod here with these uh, screws. So we put two screws over here with a lock washer. And uh, not sure the best way to do that here because uh, we have to be able to put here unless they can stay there tightly no they don't so you have to put maybe just one at a time because if we do that they will fall so we'll put just one and just like that and screw just one like so and then the second one we'll just put it back there and hold it in place and align the holes and screw this right there right there so that should do it like that now this is not a lock nut in the back here but I don't think we need to put the Loctite at the back I'm not sure maybe I'll, I'll end up putting some blue uh, Loctite but this is the the bracket there And we have a limit switch to install right here. Before we go further, I just want here to show that this screw over here is a little long. And I use the one that is in the bag. So I'm not sure. I think we'll have to change that at the end. Look at that. The, uh, the guy doesn't go in here because of that screw. So maybe there is a different screw in another bag. Um, like if not I, I'm going to cut this screw so this may be due to the previous version of this uh, printer now we can install the uh, motor in the bracket over here and as you can see the holes are wide so this will help us to put tension on the belt so for now we will tighten the motor all the way to the right this way so that we can move the motor to the left to put some tension and we will use the four small black screws for that and make sure that you install the motor with the bracket facing down this way here now we can install the gear on the shaft of the motor and um, again we won't measure the the height because we I prefer not to we will see what is an easier way to measure the right height for this uh, this sprocket here In the next step, we are going to install the uh, the bracket and the wheels for the extruder carriage using the screws in bag B041. So what we do here, we hold the uh, bracket like this. We have three long screws, so we will do first the one at the uh, at the bottom. So we put the screw here. Then we put actually, you know what? We will start at the top because the bottom is the opposite so put the screw here we put an aluminum spacer we put a wheel and we put a lock nut we do the same thing over here a long screw an aluminum spacer 
and a lock nut just like that and for the bottom it is the opposite so we use the screw we put in a wheel we have to put a little washer because there is an eccentric nut eccentric nut this way towards the plate just like that and then we feed this in the big the bigger hole at the bottom here and we put a lock nut at the back so now I'm going to uh, tighten the top wheels because they are not movable these two at the top here do not move the one at the bottom I will tighten but not too much because we need to be able to adjust the uh, eccentric nut over here and again I think this is better before mounting the extruder and everything I just uh, adjusted here on the x-axis as you can see and I just adjusted the eccentric nut over here so that we have a perfect movement with no wobbling and it's not too difficult to move on the x-axis so now I can continue with the uh, installation now we're going to install these two uh, brackets with the three wheels and the two uh, bearings using the screws in bag B04 so to do that we take our bracket in this orientation we put the long screw over here an aluminum spacer a wheel another aluminum spacer and we just hold it here then we put another screw over here aluminum spacer we wheel aluminum spacer we took our we take our bracket it goes this way with this at the top then we put a lock nut over here which I will tighten in a few seconds a lock nut over here before we tighten these we feed a screw here and we put an eccentric nut this is a little difficult but an eccentric nut over here like that I put one already over here as you can see in the bracket to make it easier then I put the washer over here then we put the wheel another washer and then in the eccentric knot and a lock knot over here so that's our assembly I'm going to tighten everything here and then uh, we will install the the bearings before installing the bearings I want to make sure that this is rolling very well on a uh, vertical uh, rail so I'm going to adjust the eccentric uh, knots over here and we will see if we get a smooth roll now as you can see we have a very very smooth movement no uh, wobbling so now we can uh, tighten the lock knot behind the eccentric knots now the screws left in the bag does not allow me to uh, install these uh, bearings in the hole here so the screw is a little too large to fit in the hole right there so it doesn't fit so I don't know I'll continue the installation maybe at some point I'll get the screw that does fit and if it doesn't I'm just going to enlarge this hole over here but for now I'm not sure maybe the screw is in another bag so I'll just wait and uh, continue with the installation then we install through these uh, two holes over here the small black uh, screw and two um, t-nuts and this will slide on our bracket over here so right there like so and we will just screw these over here through the holes over here and align the end with the, uh, the excess axis uh, bracket like so so right there when you install the bracket here don't forget to run the carriage here first in the rail so don't forget to do that in the right orientation 
actually the correct position of this uh, of this bracket here on the x-axis is not known really there is no mark on the axis and it's not known until you slide over here the uh, the two uh, side rails so we'll just leave it like this uh, for now and there's also here we need the space here for our bearing that we have not installed yet in one of the last bags I found these screws over here they're a bit shorter so I think and, I, and there are two so I think I can use the two here to replace the ones that were too long that were actually well, too long here for the rail to if you remember right here too long for the rail to go in so I'm going to replace these uh, two screws over here with these uh, shorter ones here Now our red Loctite is dry after one day and as you can see when I rotate the, uh, the wheel to adjust the level of the bed it is not rotating so that will be I, can, I think much better. Now to uh, glue the print surface onto the heat bed we need to make sure first that we have the right orientation of course this is the front here we have hammers over here and see the fit to see how we should start in a corner so this seems to be a perfect fit yes so then we remove the uh, the backing in one corner only just like that and this will allow us to do one corner without touching the rest of the surface just like that so now that we know we are starting correctly we can take this slowly, take the back, Just like that it says perfect and there is doing it this way although I did struggle a little bit at the beginning here because I was coming a little bit at an angle so before gluing the whole thing I was able just to pull it and just tilt it a little bit counterclockwise so now we have our surface now with bag B01 we are going to install the two vertical rails for the z-axis there is no orienta special orientation here as you can see there are no holes on the side only two at the top and two at the bottom so we're going to tilt this unit sideways and use those big screws with a lock nut two for each side so just like that and we will feed the bottom here and attach the vertical rod over here we will tighten this only at 90 percent because we may have to move them a little bit when we put the excess axis uh, on top uh, of this so we don't need to tighten completely uh, for now just a word of caution before we proceed here when I install the uh, Y axis on top of our frame I put it on the wrong side and I realized that after because I had here big holes facing up and they should be facing down to hide the the, the head of the screw so fortunately I could just remove this plastic front cover and just slide the two sides sideways and rotate them and change the wheels uh, side so that was easy but be careful when you have your frame done that you install the Y axis on the right side of the frame like I said we're not going to tighten these too firmly for now because we may need to rotate them a little bit to make sure they're totally uh, parallel or also move them a little bit apart so we can check that also with a ruler like this to make sure that they are perfectly parallel so we'll do that before we tighten everything with the assembly in place in the next step we install the uh, Z motor assembly with the screws in bag B07 so first thing we do here is use this uh, black bracket and uh, to install the big screws here in this 
direction with a T-nut at the back and we do that for the other side also T-nut at the back here like so and then we install this on the motor the right side up because of the uh, the big holes for the screws with the connector here facing facing you so now we use these screws over here and these are just Phillips screws again this is metal on metal here so I would be uh, I would be tempted to use a Loctite here, but I won't for now because this is plastic, so it's going to lock in the plastic, the threads. Now this one is not going in, there you go. Okay, and this one. Okay, good. Uh, now we have to install the coupler. They don't show uh, the, uh, the height to install this thing. Uh, there is no specs for the height but there is an O-ring that we put here to isolate a little rubber ring as you can see to isolate the uh, coupler from the rod so I guess it doesn't really matter the, the height but I would put it at, uh, at mid height just trying to get the right like looking uh, sideways uh, yeah it seems to be a uh, mid height maybe a bit higher and then we put the ring over here and we're going to install this on the frame now we install the Z motor on the back here aligning the, uh, the T nuts vertically so that they fit over here just like that all the way down and now we uh, tighten these two screws with the T nuts making sure the T nuts uh, rotate in the process there you go and tie it over here and recheck over there so there we go so our motor is installed now with the rest of the screws in the back we're going to install the uh, the guide for the uh, z-axis rod in over here in this hole so now I would have done that before when the, the bracket was alone and not with the full assembly it would have been uh, easier so uh, to, to do this here we have to turn this sideways to make it easier just like that sideways feed the four screws because we need to need feed four with the little lock washers so they have to stay in place like that and then we'll feed the other one with a lock washer even though there's a lock washer I think I'm going to put some uh, uh, blue Loctite uh, on those uh, screws here and then another one over here with a lock washer so now we have all four now we need to feed holding with our fingers we need to feed this wheel in the hole just like that one screw is not going in there you go and now we put the uh, the, the, the nuts at the back this is not an easy uh, process here especially when you have uh, big uh, fingers there you go and now I'm going to tighten all these uh, four guide is installed as you can see here probably uh, easier to do when you have the bracket alone and not the uh, the full assembly and like I said I put a little bit of uh, blue uh, Loctite here I am almost at the end of the installation I went through all the bags and I did not find a different screw that would fit here so I used a uh, drill bit as you can see here and I just tapped the uh, the top of the hole to make it a bit larger for the screw to bite in the plastic and it did work perfectly so I think this is the right uh, screw and I put a drop of uh, blue Loctite over here because this is not a uh, lock nut it's just a regular nut and now we have this part that is uh, complete 
Now we can install our x-axis and check that it goes up and down correctly and it should because remember I did test each bracket separately before doing the whole assembly but again we did not tighten if you remember the two side rails just to make sure this was like sliding perfectly and it is now so now we should tighten the bolts at the bottom and uh, the Amers video shows that at this point we should install the rod the z-axis rod at this point but I disagree what we should do is install the top bracket make sure that this is still going up and down correctly tighten the top bracket and at this point only when we know that the whole frame here is working perfectly only at that point we should install the rod that's my opinion you can also use a long ruler here to double check that the two vertical rails are perfectly parallel now we can install the top rail on top of the side rails using the four big bolts with a lock washer so just like here after installing the top rail again it's important to check that our x-axis is still working smoothly as you can see now we can go and install the rod now we can feed the rod in the bracket of the Z motor make sure that you go all the way down and that you have put in here the rubber uh, washer okay and now you tighten the screws over here now we will install the bracket that holds the uh, Z rod here at the top and the bracket and the screws are in bag B042 so you hold the bracket in this orientation you put the bearing in the hole and among the four screws you use the one with the round head to hold the bearing in place and the two screws or the flat screws with a T-nut over here to hold the bracket in the rail we simply push the bracket in place over here and uh, one T-nut will fit in between the two bolts holding the top rail onto the side rail so now we have this uh, in place now before we proceed further with the installation I put a drop of oil at the top and here in the middle using just regular 3-in-1 oil so this will help a lot here with the smooth movement on the z-axis so now we need to move our X assembly up all the way up and then all the way down just to spread the oil around the full length of the rod and now we will move all the way down it's worth noting that the kit includes here the second bracket if you want to upgrade with the second Z rod here on that side all right we're ready to proceed now to the next step now that our x-axis is in place we will install the belt and using the clip again technique so that I can easily put the two tie wraps this is like using a third hand so make sure that the teeth are facing up I prefer to start on the left side here I find it easier then we will go around the sprocket here make sure the motor is all the way to the right on the slots over here the belt will go under inside the rail here around this um, bearing and then here we will attach it right here in this slot we have our two tie wraps in place and again it's much easier if you use the clip uh, technique make sure that when you run the belt you go above the wheel over here and not on the side make sure that when you install the clip here you have a lot of tension on the belt because you don't have a lot of play on the motor to uh, pull back now we have our two tie wraps in place before cutting the tie wraps and the excess belt make sure that you are correctly here in the rail and around the pulley and also that uh, you have adjusted the motor location to make sure that you have enough tension on the belt remember I said we would adjust the location of the sprocket here 
once the belt is in place and this is because of this here we need to adjust this that the belt is right in the center of the rail but we don't know where the belt will sit on the sprocket so we need to move the carriage a few times and as you can see the belt has a tendency to go all the way to the right so that tells me this is the right location so i need to move the pulley or the sprocket a little bit on the inside so that the belt is right at the center of the rail now we have the belt perfectly centered and it's also perfectly centered on the side of the bearing but there is no adjustment here now we will proceed with installing the extruder bracket with these uh, two screws now we can install the extruder under the bracket making sure that the cables fit in the slot here on the side with the round head black screws now the extruder is in place we can install the feeder and the uh, motor we could have installed that first and then the extruder second it doesn't really matter we will install the feeder motor under the bracket like so with the connector on the side and the feeder on top like this with these three long screws the feeder is now installed with the motor make sure you don't tighten these three screws too much because the feeder is made of plastic here now we will proceed with the installation of the z-axis limit switch with the t-nut in the back that we installed in the previous step right here on the channel and the instructions say that the top of the switch should be at 10 centimeters from the surface here or the bottom of the feet before seeing that the mechanical assembly is complete we have to check the location of our limit switches that is not covered in the video from Amers. so the x-axis limit switch here cannot be adjusted as you can see it is fixed the uh, z-axis we did install correctly at 10 centimeters above the table top to the top of the switch here so this one is also done but as you can see the y-axis limit switch has to be adjusted quite a bit as you can see it's far away from the edge of the rail and that is because when the hot bed moves backwards look at that the bracket here is going to hit the uh, the idler where you have the uh, the bearing for the belt so if you're not careful with the location of the limit switch the motor is going to force its way and eventually damage the belt and most likely at the end over there where the uh, the teeth will be broken over here so be very careful here uh, in the uh, location of this limit switch our printer is now fully mechanically assembled as you can see we just need to install the bottom tubes and all the electrical wiring which i will do but i want to show you first all the mechanical uh, parts and uh, i ended up at the end with uh, two extra screws with uh, t-nuts and i think that they came from the fact that the previous model had a separate power supply and a control board and this one has only one unit as we saw previously Now to install the bottom tube, make sure that you push all the way down. You will feel a first resistance, but you won't be all the way down to the nozzle. So make sure that you wiggle the tube a little bit and go down. As you can see, I did not use the white tubing that came with the kit. I prefer to use the high quality uh, Capricorn uh, tubing. And the same thing over here, make sure that you push all the way inside the, uh, the feeder until the tubing stops. Now it's time to install all the cables, the two ribbon cables, the two round cables, and connect all the motors and the limit the switches. So to do that, we need to turn the unit upside down, and I did remove the knob so that we don't damage it in the front. And now we have to remove these four screws to remove the back panel. Now the cover is removed and we can see here all the cables are nicely tucked in together so I'm going to cut the tie wrap 
Now we need to feed the cables to the right location uh, and uh, we have openings on the four sides so the y-axis limit switch will go here in the back hole because the limit switch is here in the back the y motor cable will go here to the front where the motor here is located and uh, we have nothing on this side of the printer everything is on that side here so the remaining cables and there should be five of them five connectors three over here and two over here all these five will go through that little hole here which is uh, very small so I'm sure well I'm sure that uh, it's going to fit but uh, if we go one by one it should uh, it should go so it was a tight fit here on the side so maybe Omers can make the slot a bit bigger so we have our cables now at the right location and now we can install our two ribbon cables over here we have here connectors uh, EXP1 and EXP2 and there is a, a slot uh, on, or a notch on the cable so they go in only one orientation uh, over here, I was not able to see if there is which one is uh, EXP1, EXP2, unless I am blind, I cannot see. So the one at the top is EXP2. So the cable at the top here will go to EXP2 here, and the connector at the bottom is EXP1. Our ribbon cables are now connected, and I put uh, three tie wraps here so to, to keep that neatly in place over here. So this goes under the printer. So now we can put our plate back on, and we will connect our cables. The bottom plate is now back in place. Do not tighten these screws too much because you are in plastic here. Now before turning the unit uh, back up, we can install the limit switch for the uh, Y axis and again each cable here has a little um, identification tab and here at the bottom, and I'm going to move my camera down here, we can also connect the uh, motor for the Y axis. Now we can connect the remaining five uh, connectors onto the motors and the limit switches on this side of the printer. Now we have our five connectors connected over here. Cable management, as you can see, is very, very clean. Having uh, outside ports on different sides of the uh, control panel and the power supply. Make sure you have enough slack here, though, because when the Z-axis uh, goes up, this cable needs to go up also with the uh, extruder. So be careful over here. Now finally at the end we can install our two round cables. Make sure that for the uh, heat bed that it can move here freely. And also we'll need to put tie wraps here to hold this uh, cable alongside the uh, bottom tube over here and uh, leave this cable on the side. Now I put a few tie wraps over here to keep it uh, neat and it's a good thing that the uh, armors uh, gives a lot of uh, tie wraps in the bag. Now I have this here loose on the side. I may uh, print something like a bracket or something like I did for my Ender 3 so to have, to have this here more like a teddy on the side. Now that the installation is complete you probably notice that there is no spool holder. I think it is in the SD card over here so you have to print it yourself. So I hope you appreciated this video. Uh, like I said, I gave as much details as possible. The next video will be testing this printer. Now I need to print the uh, spool holder, which is not provided, unfortunately. Um, and I'm going to uh, show the difference in quality between this printer and one that is very popular, of course, the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pro. And I do have an Ender 3, so I'll be able to compare the print quality between the Tarantula Pro and the Ender 3. So thank you for watching guys and see you in my next video.